wild alligators are thriving inside an abandoned nuclear weapons site. At the Hanford site in Washington, tons of animals are picking up radioactive material from the soil and spreading it across the area. And back in 1954, the crew of the Lucky Dragon No. 5 got hit with nuclear fallout from a hydrogen bomb test, leaving them sick and contaminating their entire catch of tuna. These are horrifying creatures found in nuclear waste dumps. Deep inside a decommissioned US nuclear weapons plant in the southeast, wild alligators are taking over. A BBC Earth episode reports from the front line, followed biologist Laura Kojima and her team as they captured alligators in the contaminated waterways and sediments. So every year they catch dozens of these gators to test for radiation and toxins. They tag them, scan their skin, tails, and internal organs, looking for leftover radioactive material. So far, most alligators seem clean, but since they're at the top of the food chain, they act like the quote, canaries in the coal mine for the swamp ecosystem. Basically, if radioactive waste starts spreading through the food chain, the gators will be the first to show it. Somehow though, these things have adapted to live in a human-made nuclear wasteland, living in a swamp that most people wouldn't dare enter. The Hanford site in Washington was at one time a secret plutonium factory for nuclear bombs. It's still one of the most radioactive places in the US, but it's also home to deer, turkeys, wild hogs, and rabbits that scientists have been studying. Researchers found rabbits foraging near contaminated soil with high levels of cesium-137, a dangerous radioactive isotope that sticks around for decades. The Department of Energy and wildlife biologists monitor these animals because they can carry radioactive particles outside the site. Rabbits eat plants growing in contaminated areas and then move around the site and sometimes beyond. Other animals can show traces of radiation too, but the rabbits consistently show the highest levels. So they're super valuable when it comes to understanding how far the contamination might spread. On March 1st, 1954, the Japanese tuna boat Lucky Dragon No. 5 was fishing near the Marshall Islands when the US Castle Bravo hydrogen bomb test at Bikini Atoll went off. 15 megatons, way bigger than they'd apparently expected. Crew members saw this massive flash, and then hours later, a white powdery substance started blanketing the ship. Well, they scooped it up with their bare hands. It filled their hair, uh, their noses, their eyes, even got into their underwear. That dust carried fallout, cesium, strontium, and uranium. The crew got sick right away with nausea, burns, red eyes, bleeding gums. One man, Chief Radio Man Aikichi Kubayama, died in September that year from radiation sickness, making him the first person to die from a hydrogen bomb blast. Other crew members suffered severe symptoms and spent weeks in the hospital. They had to dump two tons of tuna once the ship returned to port. They were completely contaminated. The fallout had spread over 7,000 square miles of ocean as well. In some areas contaminated by radiation, eastern tree frogs have been found with completely black skin, a condition called melanism. Scientists think this dark color happens because these frogs produce extra melanin, the pigment that gives skin its color. Possibly to protect themselves from harmful UV rays or radiation, studies near nuclear sites show that these frogs living in radioactive zones developed this black skin over time, which is unusual, of course, compared to their normally green or brown cousins. The extra melanin might help absorb or block radiation and UV light, acting like a natural sunscreen. They're still trying to figure out exactly how this dark skin helps them and whether radiation caused genetic changes or triggered the melanin increase in some other way. Either way though, seeing entire populations of frogs turn black near nuclear contamination zones, that's well, pretty eerie. Back in the 1940s and 50s, the US dropped 43 nuclear bombs on Enewak Atoll. Decades later, scientists noticed something pretty weird. Sea turtles had nuclear pollution in their shells. Turns out turtles pick up this radioactive material when they eat algae or swim through contaminated water. That radiation gets locked into layers of their shells. Scientists grabbed some turtle shells, even old museum samples, 
and found nuclear material buried in different layers. One sample collected in 1978 showed uranium in the shell 20 years after the tests had stopped. Off the coast of Greece, there was this story about a pale, mutated, misshapen dolphin. So this photo here was snapped by a man named Harvey Robertson, a Scottish tourist on a boat cruise. It does look pretty damn strange. I mean, if someone in a lab coat showed me this image and said it was a radioactive dolphin, I'd probably believe them. The image first surfaced on cryptid forums where fishermen and beachgoers came forward saying they'd seen it near the Lonian Sea areas, rumored to contain dumped cruise ship waste. Zoologist Dr. Darren Nash from the University of Southampton's National Oceanography Center thinks that if someone took a skin sample from this thing though, it would probably show a lot of polyvinyl chloride, basically plastic. So yeah, he doesn't really think this creature is real. But what do you think? After the 2011 meltdown at Fukushima, scientists and members of the Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, have been testing fish in the plant's inner harbor, and they've come to some shocking results. Well, maybe not, not all that shocking, considering what happened, but still interesting. In May 2022, they caught a black rockfish that was full of cesium-137, 180 times Japan's safe limit. Over a year-long period, they found 44 fish above the limit, caught inside or near the same port areas. These contaminated fish are almost all bottom dwellers that feed off the sediment where radioactive cesium has settled. The sediment was found to have over 100,000 becquerels per kilogram of radioactivity. To put that in to perspective, Japan's safety limit for radioactive cesium in food is just 100 becquerels per kilogram. This stuff was literally a thousand times over the safe limit, so way too dangerous for human exposure, obviously. TEPCO has installed nets to stop this radiated seafood from mixing with safer catch, but even then, a fish caught about 50 kilometers away in January of 2022 was still above the limit, so bottom line is cleanup hasn't eliminated all radiation in the food chain. In the weeks leading up to the Chernobyl disaster in April of 1986, people in the area started reporting something strange, sightings of a massive black bird-like creature near the power plant. Workers described it as huge, with a wingspan of over 20 feet with glowing red eyes that pierced through the fog. Some said it would circle the plant, some claimed it hovered over Pripyat itself, just watching. People who claimed to see the creature often reported being plagued by terrifying nightmares afterward, and there were stories about mysterious phone calls with no one on the other end, just heavy breathing. It would also come on around the same time people would report seeing the bird. Some believe the creature was a warning, an omen, something tied to the disaster that was about to take place. And after the explosion at Reactor 4, the sightings stopped. No one claimed to see the blackbird again. Now, here's something that is totally verified. Inside the ruins of Chernobyl nuclear power plant, scientists discovered something very unexpected, a black fungus that seems to grow toward radiation. This fungus called Cladosporium sporosperum, I think I'm pronouncing that right, probably not though. Well, it seems to feed off the radiation. Researchers first noticed it because it was spreading on the walls of the reactor's damaged areas. What makes this fungus so weird is that it contains high levels of melanin. Again, that same pigment that gives human skin color. Melanin in this case seems to help the fungus absorb radiation and possibly convert it into chemical energy to grow. It's like the fungus is photosynthesizing, but instead of using sunlight, it's using radiation. When scientists studied it, they found that the fungus actually grew faster when it was exposed to gamma radiation. Not just resistant, it's thriving in an environment that's lethal to most life on Earth. And that's really cool because now scientists start thinking this fungus could possibly be used for radiation shielding in the future, maybe on space missions. When the Chernobyl disaster happened in 1986, radioactive fallout spread across Europe, settling into forest soil and water. Decades later, wild boars, especially in Germany, 
are still testing dangerously radioactive. The main problem is that these boars love to dig up and eat underground mushrooms called deer truffles, which are really good at soaking up radioactive particles from the contaminated soil. Even after all this time, radiation levels on the surface have, have dropped as well, but mushrooms keep pulling all that radioactive material up from the ground. And since boars rely on them as a big part of their diet, the animals end up with high levels of it in their bodies. Some samples tested in Germany have shown levels of radioactivity far above safe limits for human consumption. It's such a big issue that hunters who kill these boars are required to have them tested before the meat can be eaten or sold. In a lot of cases, the meat is just discarded. And these radioactive boars have spread all across Europe migrating and mixing with other populations. I have been your host James and I will catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.